It's us. It's Tessa. It's Nicole. And we're here. We're alone. We're alone. We're, we're alone, alone in my garage. Oh my God. It's dark in here. <laughs> Are we in the isolation tank? Oh no. Not yet. No, it's not that dark in here. <laughs> so... We are, it is the 25th anniversary yes. of Can't Hardly Wait, Whee! 1998. That's correct. Before we get into it. Do the doom biz. So this is another, okay, first we have two mm. new patrons. Do the most important, important stuff. We want to thank Margot Padilla and Jared Ford Manson for joining our Patreon this week. Welcome! And... You guys remember I've mentioned before at the ten dollar tier, you get a shout out, you get to be in some photo edits. Well, we got another one of those. Oh shit! From super Drew, from blah, 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 burp, burp, burp. from <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> it's the Irish defamation. Oh, I better watch my step. We've got another shout out from a super doomer. Travis is a co-host with Nick on the Hoppy Trails podcast, a show about craft beer and beverages, food and enjoying life. Mm. And with Steph on You, Me and Squee, a show about life and lessons learned raising their baby, Drew Francis. He's a co-owner of Sequoia Dia Productions, LLC, where they produce all kinds of fun content from podcasts to videos to original music and help others realize their own creative dreams. Born in 1982, Travis was fully saturated with everything the 80s had to offer and was thus fully prepared to take on the full force of 1990s pop culture scandals and media, inflicting the deep psychological scars he tends to today, <laughs> as do we all. Doom Gen Pod provides that solace, that comfort, that camaraderie all battle-worn soldiers need to remind them that they're not alone and that someone else was there and someone else remembers. Ooh. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. And I do. I ain't forget. And so look for him in the photo edits for Can't Hardly Wait. Yes. And don't forget, all this and more can be yours for $10 Yay! a month. You could have it. Go it to patreon.com forward slash doom generation. And there's other tiers. Like, you don't have to do this. You could do the $2 tier. You got all the audio. Yep. The four dollar tier, you get a little bit of merch and some audio, and all the audio. Right, right. Everything comes with all the audio. Yeah, yeah. And then ten dollars, you get all the audio, all the merch, and the the custom shout out and your photo edits. Yep. So let's get into can't can't hardly, hardly wait. wait. I can't hardly wait to get into can't hardly wait, <laughs> which is available right now on Max. Yeah, HBO Max. Oh, I saw that. I Girl, saw that today. I had to when download I to, a new fucking app to watch the shit. I went and saw the thing, and it was like, "Oh, now you have to download." And yeah. I was like, "Oh no!" Is it? I thought it was going to like gonna lock work. me out, but it it let me. Log no, right it back came in. up like I mean, I was like, "Oh, thank God," because it was way too early to contact you. I know. Uh, it was way too. I'm surprised I got up this early, that early. I was like, it's "This later now." It's yeah, I know. Thirty eight p.m. <laughs> well, I'm tired. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because Tessa was at The Cure last I night. I was. I was. And There's I'm, no Cure music in this, right? No, no, there isn't. That was, it's like a different era. True. A different, well, it covered several eras. But that's, if I sound a little tired, I'm going to try to pep it up she a little bit. She was getting her life. I was getting my entire motherfucking life last night. Oh, so the cast. So now there are a lot of cameos by people who yeah. were already or would become pretty famous faces. Right. But we're not going to do all that in the cast. Not all of that in the beginning. We're just going to do like the mains, the mains, right? So I got Jennifer Love Hewitt mm -hmm. as little Amanda Beckett, uh, Ethan Embry as Preston Myers, Preston Myers, little Charlie Corsmo as William Lichter. Mm -hmm. William Lichter. I don't even know her. <laughs> uh, Lauren Ambrose as Denise Fleming. Seth Green as Kenny Fisher, yo. Special K. Special K, baby. Yeah, he's special, all right. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Peter Fashionelli. 
I was going to ask, is it Fascinelli? Fascinelli? Okay. I don't know. It seems like, I, I, girl, you know I don't know. We never know. You know I don't know uh, as Mike Dexter, big man on campus. And uh, I also put Jenna Elfman as the angel, but okay, we'll show yeah, that's all I have. Yeah, okay, good. And let's just get this out of the way real quick. So there is a thing that goes around that says that Ethan Embry was so stoned oh, yes. during the filming of Can't Hardly Wait that he barely remembers making it. So right. I asked Ethan Embry himself. She asked her best friend Ethan, and that's I said I sent him this post, and I said, "Is this true?" Mm-hmm. And this is the reply. Partially. I was pretty high all the time in the 90s, but I remember as much as a 45-year-old should remember his 19th year. I mean... The end. Yeah. That's that's, all there is to say about how stoned Ethan Embry was during Can't Hardly Wait. I mean... (laughs) How much do I remember about being 19? Well, like, you have to think about it that way, though. Like, it was like a job. Right. For them. Like, it might have been a touchstone for, like, all these Mm -hmm. people, but it was just a job that they did. Like, do you remember working at the fucking liquor store at that time? Or, like, Like, yeah, I remember it sort of, but I remember every fucking day of it in detail. So, like, you know. It wasn't as special for them making it necessarily as it was for some of y'all watching it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And this takes place on Barry Manilow's actual birthday right right I because i, I think you. it says later too right it's june 17th yeah. 1998 so it's graduation day class of 98 <clears throat> right which There's is one year behind me and one year ahead of you right, right? so the sandwich year sandwich year for us and this is very this i love this opening scene because yes. it's so 1998 it is like there's all no this- phone so it's Everybody's the hand slapping game and the chatting, the and paper fucking the little coochie fortune catcher, te- coochie catcher fortune teller. <laughs> God, we did those for fucking ever. The, Someone's naked under their robe. Just the gossiping, yep. the talking did about the party hear? that night. Mike and Amanda broke up, mm-hmm. and there's a huge party tonight. The talk of the town. I. And I we know. meet Preston because oh Preston hears from the whispering that Amanda's single, and then we meet Preston. Bam. Ugh. And we have some thoughts. I'm saying, okay, about, so I always We'll thought, get into it as we get further, but yeah. I know, but I always thought that I hated Ethan Embry, and it's not true. I don't I don't hate Ethan Embry. Who I hate he is Preston, Preston Meyer. <laughs> like I have so many notes throughout this whole thing, like sad, pathetic, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, respect yourself. What right? the fuck is this shit? Like go to fu- what <sighs> And so, so he's immediately telling his best friend Denise, and she's like, and she's like, I don't even want to fucking go to this party, really? right? Like, we don't know these people; I these are not go. our friends. Yeah, why should we go to this party? And she's also, is this where she's trying to tell him like, uh, about Amanda, or is that later? Well, he, this is where she's telling him not to look back, never look back, and yeah. he's like talking about his connection to mm. Amanda, and you get this little flashback. Of how they quote unquote met, yes, freshman year. This boy has never spoken no. a word, no, to this girl. He's a loser goon. This is four years ago. He was late to school. If he wasn't late for the bus, he oh, might he have would... never. He was the first person to lay eyes on Amanda. He called Beckett. dibs on Amanda Beckett this is in his mind. So pathetic. It is. It is gross. Is and what it was it is. solidified. All that could have been coincidence, right. but. She eats strawberry pop tarts. Well, no, before that, she's in his class. Oh, yeah, she's in his class. And, and then, then who does she get sat next to, right, right next, next to, to him. him? And then the pop tart. She looks, or he looks down, and she's got the same. Stra- Motherfucker, a strawberry pop tart. 50% of your like class has a strawberry pop tart in their bag right now. Important pop tart of 1998. Obviously. Come of on, a then. lot of years. Yeah. It's still the rainbow delicious. sprinkle on yes. the white frosting, a strawberry pop tart. Who doesn't have a... I got a strawberry Pop-Tart in my pocket <laughs> right, right now. now. Are we meant to be, Preston? Yes. So this is the saddest. And I don't remember why. I don't know if at the time when I saw this, if I felt like this was meaningful somehow. I, I don't but know. But I, I remember... I don't... I when don't. we get to the dooming part of this movie, that's what, that's, that's what uh. it is. <laughs> and so he's t- talking about... He's been pining for this girl since freshman year. Right. She has no idea he exists. It just so happened when they the teacher asked who wants to show around campus before that Mike he could Dexter say, volunteers. Mike Dexter swooped in on her. If and it weren't for that, she would have been his away from him. Ugh. 
because she has no free agency. Right. Because she doesn't get to make any decisions. She's just no. a pawn. And then she just acts that way throughout uh-huh. the rest of the fucking movie. She recognizes it at a certain point, but then just goes right back into <laughs> yeah, that Yeah, but like, you know, again. whatever. That's me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so meanwhile, we meet Mike and his friends who can't believe that he broke up with Amanda. Oh, I know. But he's like, it's uh, like how we That's say. all he has to say <laughs> about it. Big old Bert. Right? And like... Oh, like, but he's so she's so things. hot, and he's like, yeah, for a high school girl. These guys are major irritants. We're gonna meet women in college, women with no curfew, women on the pill, man. And so he wants all his friends to break up with their girls too, so they can get with every girl in sight this Fucking summer. Fucking dorks. Mike Dexter's god. Oh yeah, no, Mike Dexter's an asshole. Yeah, that's all Mike Dexter ever has been. Yeah, what does he have be. to ever offer this world but date rapes and AIDS jokes? And William tells it like it is. Like you right? said, Mike uh-huh. Dexter's an asshole. And so we meet William the valedictorian, little Charlie Cosmo, which my husband was like, what did he go on to be in? I said, no, no, no. No. You're thinking of what was he in right, before. Because this, he was the boy from Hook. This was his first and last appearance since Hook. Really? And at the time, he was it, He was at MIT. Oh, like, wow. he's fine. Yeah, he's not like, oh. No, like, he did, was like, he went on to go, like, fucking MIT. Yeah. Isn't that like a, I almost said special school. <laughs> 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 like, um, you know, for smart people. Yeah, it's one of them smart yeah, people's one schools. One of those smart people schools. <laughs> And so um, he's talking about Mike has made a hobby of his pain for uh, decades since right. they were like in elementary he said, school. Like third grade. Yeah. He's like kept every infraction mm-hmm. that Mike Dexter has made upon his He person. has a list of all the ways that Mike has fucked his shit up over his the years. His working rainforest, the oh. eye patch he had to wear. And so they're going to humiliate Mike tonight. Right. And so he's got his two friends there and he shows them his plan. So they're going to jump him, chloroform him. Yeah, the chloroform that they made in, in science class or whatever the fuck. Like him and made. a friend. They're planning to get to lure him and a friend or two right. out to the out pool house. To the pool house. They're going to jump him, not render them unconscious somehow. They're going to get the drop on him and then render them unconscious with the with chloroform, chloroform that they made. Then strip their clothes off, take <clears> Polaroids <throat> of them in lurid naked embraces. So like very Heather's vibes, like yeah. the plan to catch a them in bit. the forest. It's that... It, that it's just because it's a teen movie. It's like a that's what you, know. you do to football players who bully you. I guess well, is you. I mean, I guess like I was actually kind of shocked that in the year of our Lord nineteen ninety eight <laughs> there was so many uh, F slurs. I thought there was only two. I only well, I mean, two. but still, it ha- it was kind of weird that it happened twice. It like was it was it was made a much bigger deal. I guess. Yeah, I guess. And then we meet Kenny. Yo, I oh, gotta shit, have sex I gotta tonight. Have sex tonight. And Bobby Which, Jacoby's one lucky, of his honey. homies. Oh yeah, that's right. And he's reading Playboy in the liquor store. <laughs> or Talk, is it Playboy or, or I don't know House Playpen or, or something? I don't yeah. know. He's got that backpack full of like French ticklers, <laughs> which is a sign condoms. of someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Candles, <laughs> like. Well, no, there was an S flower <laughs> right here where the, he brings out the candle. And later on, there was. Like oh, a yeah, more. that's right. And so, well, they're pumping whatever. on him like his friends are like, are you fucking serious? With yeah, this with the candle. And the oh, because they did. And yeah. The Kama Sutra. And that redheaded kid with no name. The kid from fucking American Pie is back right, there the stealing shit. Eat pubes. <laughs> the pube eater kid. <laughs> but yeah, he's back there. The klepto kid is what I had him out. Yeah. He's I just don't think he has randomly a character name. stealing shit throughout the whole movie. And then we meet <clears throat> or no, then Denise and Preston arrive at the party. Right. And he talks about this letter that he's rewritten and rewritten to Amanda, the girl he has never spoken right. to. Never all ever. he knows about her is what she looks like. Mm. And that she likes Pop Tarts. And that she likes strawberry Pop Tarts. Right. What which is like ninety percent of the population. Right. If you've had a strawberry pop tart, you it's probably good. like strawberry pop tarts. I mean, I like strawberry pop tarts. It's really not that bizarre. No, not really. It doesn't like she's pretty basic. Yeah, she doesn't stand out as anybody special, really. And all she's been, as she says herself, for all these years, is Mike's fucking right. girlfriend. Right. She's all yeah, exactly. So. Like she doesn't even know who the fuck she is because she's Mike Dexter's girlfriend. And then the song Mandy comes on the radio. Oh, Mandy, which he takes as a sign, and she's like a pretty sure that was about a, his dog yeah and he's like shut up i don't want to hear it right because she's trying she's like 
you like, can't, please. Are, are you really going to give her a letter that you've been rewriting since you were a freshman? four years? And she knows how fucking cringe it is. Yes. That you've never spoken to her. Like, she's trying not to, like, shit on his fantasy, but she's also trying not to let, like, humiliate. Like, he leaves like, sure, the next you want day. an opportunity to make out with her at a party? <sighs> Super cool. Whatever. It's high school. But, like, you want a relationship with I, her based upon some fantasy? Because it's your last, because it's fate. It's the, like, it's signs. It's his last chance. He leaves the next day. So even if yeah, all so of what this was blows up in plan? his fucking face. You're fucking moving. I guess he'll be gone. So what does it matter? And then fucking Melissa Joan Hart out there with her yearbook. Oh, my God. I just have all Clarissa 522. She, I, know. I don't think she had a name either. She, I, I put MD or MJH. Throughout the whole thing. Now so, it sounds complicated to say it, but it was way easier to write it. So she's the annoying girl who has to get everybody they went to school with. All 522 signature. Huntington seniors' signatures in her yearbook. How ambitious. Mm. So yeah, she stops Preston to get her yearbook signed. And then Kenny and his homies roll up. Rolling with the homies. homies. Well, and like, of course, there's a, so, folks that are out of town, but like over graduation, your parents left town. Right, and they're coming you back. Just graduated today. Would yeah. they leave right they after graduation, there? or they weren't there? And they're coming back like Sunday. So well, on and the nobody weekend. knows this girl, and she's super tryhard, and she's super anxious right? about having this Because even her party. parents don't even want to be there for her graduation. <laughs> this poor it's kid. It's fucking sad. And of course, also there is a room that you are not allowed to go into. This like There's recessed, a, right? Yes, Wasn't it? Was it? Like a drop a down room. It's always a fucking yes, sunken it's the room. fancy room that no one's allowed to go into. I never had one of those. We she's never not going to have a good time. It's like the she's credited as the girl whose party it yes, is. Yes, because nobody knows where they know her from. Like, aren't she, you in I, this like, class? She's in my French class or she's in my civics class or some shit. I don't know. Whatever. It's party. And Breck and Myers and his band are setting up and he's dressed like fucking Austin Powers or something. I know, like he's got some fucking nerve with his guy liner and his fucking frilly lace cravat. Making fun of Donald Faison's cowboy right? hat. Did anyone order a love burger? <laughs> well done. And meanwhile, William and his geek squad are sneaking around outside setting up their prank. <laughs> he's like, William, you could get drunk. No, I have the BAC chart. I oh, will be right. fine. So I, <laughs> I will count exactly how many drinks, how many yes. beverages I could imbibe. And then they tell him as he's going in that in this light, you look like David. I know. <laughs> and he's they, like, did you see they had their like little X Files yes, shirts on? Like, shirts. trust no one. I want to believe. Yes. Yeah, so like he looks like David Duchovny in this light, and so like the kids, we get into the party. Oh right, and they're they have that talking foreign to the exchange foreign exchange student. student. Like I am a sex machine. So I have a story about a foreign uh -oh. exchange student that you made say stuff. Not me personally. So I, when I was in high school, I dated guys who were no longer in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and this particular guy, his friends were in college and we would everyone, he wasn't a frat guy and he wasn't in college, but his old high school friends all were. And so they would invite us to these like kind of, they weren't at a frat, but it was like at some Remington house, parties. It was a, yeah. Like a Remington party, whatever. And there was a foreign exchange student there and he was from France and they were busting a gut because we have del taco here i don't know if you guys have del taco but del taco has an item on their menu called a deluxe chili cheese fry oh so good and it was so incredibly hard for him to say and they were and to this day if someone ever says those words to me or i see it on the menu this is how i hear it deluxe chili cheese fry <laughs> like he was fry. trying so hard and they were just like say it again say it oh again my God. deluxe chili cheese fry <laughs> <laughs> like, like trying to do it deluxe chili palms fry yeah and so that's my telling us because they weren't it, they weren't making him say anything dirty well, but they yeah. just thought it was fucking hilarious to hear well, him say is deluxe chili funny. cheese now every time I, yeah. I'm gonna get that on my way home hear it in a French like, deluxe chili cheese fry <laughs> So anyway, Mike and the gang bust in with fucking oh, high yeah, fives, yeah, yeah, yeah. shoving people over. He fucking just shoves Melissa Joan Hart when I she know. wants his signature. Like, damn. <laughs> and their girlfriends are all excited to see them. Right. Well, he's like, you guys, you know, you gotta break go up do them. it. Go break up with your girlfriends. And, and like, one ah! is Jamie Presley and Tamala Jones. Like I know. Other, the girlfriends were people, too. <laughs> with girlfriends, girlfriends are people, people too. too. <laughs> you know what? You guys, it's always important to notable remember notable people that yes. girlfriends are people too. Please remember. Doom Generation <laughs> wants to remind you. 
<laughs> Girlfriends are people too. Uh, but they... <laughs> They are, we're feminists. You hear yeah. it? Obviously. Uh, Is my feminism showing? Right? And they're too stunned because Amanda has arrived. <gasps> I can't believe she came. Oh my God. Oh, she came. Oh, but I love that Six Underground plays. I wish that was my fucking down. theme song. Six Underground. Yes. And she walks right past Preston. He does not speak to her. No. And the girls are like, are you okay? Oh, my God. We got to go talk to her. And we see Kenny practicing on himself in the mirror. Like, I, clear, just in front of everyone. Like, not I even know. privately. Kenny, it, with them goggles. And Denise is like, he looks like he's auditioning for Soul Train. <laughs> <laughs> like, not even. You Who have would to, have, like, Soul Train wouldn't no. have him. You have to rag on everybody. Well, that's He's like. But come on, He's Kenny left deserves a ragging to public mockery he when has. he came dressed like that. Like, yes, and them little braids in his hair and them I, goggles on his oh head. My God, the shoes and the oh, jinkos. Man, don't do it. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. He's harnessing his chi. Oh, sh- oh yeah, because she's telling honeys. him. Because she's telling Preston, like, come on, and he's looking for Amanda, but she's with right. her girls, and so he gets out in the hallway and harnesses his chi to go in and talk right. to her. Right? Well, like she points, she's like, she's right there, and he's like, oh my god, did she see you? And she's like, were you this weird when we went out in eighth grade? Were you this bitchy when we went out? And she's like, yeah, for the, like that the, week in eighth grade, I was, I was the a bitchy bitch. eighth grader. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So he says he's gonna do it, and she'll catch a ride home with someone. I else. know. She's like, well, whatever. I don't even want to be here. She don't know nobody else. I don't even want to be here. I have another note about that later when he fucking bails. Yeah. She doesn't even want to be here. And he's like, oh, can you find a ride home when my fantasy works out for me? While I'm spying on this conversation she's having with her girlfriends about her today breakup or yesterday breakup. Come on. That I'm preying on her like every other dude at this fucking party. Waiting like a fucking spider. Or like a vulture. Yeah. And so he like runs into the wall trying not to get caught listening. Right. Because she's trying to get away. Like, you are so much prettier than Gwyneth. And he is no Brad Pitt. And then after she walks away, they're like, like she I do not think not she's prettier. prettier than Gwyneth. Like, I, I do. I think she's prettier than Gwyneth. Especially now that I know what I know about Miss Paltrow. About Ms. Paltrow. I will take Jennifer Love Hewitt any day of the I week. I mean, I don't know. She I don't love Jennifer Love Hewitt. Me too. Yeah. What was it? Was it Party of Five? Is yeah. That the, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Her and Nev Campbell. They they give me the same. That yeah. They've got that. They were cut from the same. Big, doe weepy, mold. fucking. <sighs> Always look on the verge uh, of tears. Yeah. Yeah. They just they want to cry all the time. And Klepto Kid is still, he, now he's here at the party stealing right. shit. Right, he's stealing Love Burger t-shirts and <laughs> whatever else he can get his sticky little fingers on. And Kenny acting like he's got all these girls to choose from and they're all ignoring he's him. Like, he's lucky ladies, nine lucky ladies. And like, I can't believe he thought these goggles were going to do it. No. He looks Did like Missy you know Elliott. I'm trying to think if there was anyone I knew that tried the goggles and I can't think I of anyone off the top I of my head. I can't think of any. I really can't. I mean, I'm sure I went to like a party where someone I didn't know tried that, but nothing standing out. I, I don't, don't know. even think that. I went to a Chemical Brothers show in the well, '90s. There had to be someone. With I mean, goggles. like on a goth night or something, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Something there was like that. something like that, but not like just a, like to school or no, to a house party. No, not like a Puff Daddy and like right? Mace in the cheese grater with the fisheye yes. lens. Yes, not like that. And then William shows up at the keg. Right. Oh, and Claire Duvall, she's there. Oh, yeah, that she comes up right after this, I think. So first right, he right. goes to the keg and he takes his swig of oh, the beer yeah. and is like, don't anybody mm. have the beer? The beer has gone bad. The beer has gone bad. And they're like, no, that's no, what beer tastes, tastes like, bro. It's supposed to. So he tries it again and Kenny is still getting shunned. And this is where he gets shunned by Clea Duvall, who looks yes. like she's fully hitting on this chick. I know. I don't think she's in. Into- They're having a little thing right now, and you're interrupting. Kenny. She's a, like she could have just told him, like instead of that, she's allergic to I'm dancing. Allergic to like dancing. I'm over here trying to get. I'm trying to get in this fucking. I'm trying to get in these yeah, panties, yo. Do you see this pixie cut? Right. Do you not see this trying face? to get up on this pixie? Do cut? you not see my neck clearly? Wasn't I'm... that one girl wearing a tracksuit? Yeah. Come on. She now. was dressed as Sporty Spice. She's Sporty Spice. I'm trying to get on in there. Clearly, they were '90s lesbians. Come on now. Come on now. It wasn't explicit because it was PG-13. Right. You can say f slurs, but you can't right? have explicit lesbians. 
And William's over here checking his blood alcohol card, but oh, it's but already blurry. No longer decipher, and he hands it off. Amanda walks in on hearing a rumor that she's <gasps> been paying Mike to pretend to be with her. 50 bucks a month. He broke up with her months ago. But Bitch. she's been paying. Like, at least she had the self-respect to not run away crying and to be like, excuse me? I can I mean, fucking I hear you. Like, like, all she did was give him a look, but I would have had some shit to say. What? 50, bu- 50 what? bucks a month. Shut like, I want to be, well, mouth. we'll see. You'll see. Everybody's going to see <laughs> what a dick Mike fucking is, Mike yes. Dexter is. I don't know why it took so long for everybody to notice. And then we have this enthusiastic kid who he has to like work for the newspaper, right? That's what the that's member a when guy. Kid. Yeah. Oh, God. That's so like a kid who works for the yearbook or the newspaper or something. He's so, so is Melissa Joan Hart. Like, well, she's don't they uh, end up together? Those yeah, two at the end. The yeah, member yeah. when and the memories girl. Yeah. And so, yeah. And like you can't tell even if Preston remembers who this kid is, but he has all these no, embarrassing <laughs> stories about him to tell right in front of Amanda who he right. happened upon. He goes in there and like he's trying to talk to her and he's like remember when you barfed all over it in your backpack and like he's like no and she's amused she's like right. listening like, and kind of laughing like right and he Haha. like runs off and he was like remember when you like I was talking to that girl and you like cock blocked me he's like he's no like, when was that just, just now, now. Uh, and then that other dude oh that's her God. second cousin slithers in her cousin Ron who looks like Kroger brand what's his name from Jeepers Creepers. Oh, uh, Justin Long. He looks like Kroger Brand Justin Long. And um, so, yeah. So now he goes, Preston goes back after he gets rid of the annoying kid. And now Amanda's already gone. Of course. She's already gone. She's talking to her second cousin. Yes. And here comes uh, Kenny again. Like, why y'all got to waste my flavor? Damn. (laughs) (laughs) And like, he had just heard some girls asking who wants to go in the hot tub when here come his homies again. And they're like hassling him about. Yeah. That's why he's like, why you got to waste my flavor? <laughs> Damn. He well, runs into Mike and run and like scuttles off because Mike right. ugh, chest out at him, whatever. Gorilla right. man. Right. And uh, so now Mike is going up to his friend. And he's and all he's mad. Like, I thought you were breaking up. And he was like, well, no, like her folks are out of town and they got mirrors. I'll be mirrors like, feelings. Hey. Hey. hey, no, you don't. You don't want that. No, you don't want, and especially that. at our age. You well, no, especially now. But even maybe when you were in your teens. But I, I don't know. I saw parts. I, I did not need, need, to, need see to see angles. You angles don't need to see that I, well, not necessary. There Wasn't ain't hot. no MySpace angling your way out of a mirror nope, ceiling. <laughs> not out of your butthole. <laughs> There's no MySpace angling out of your butthole. I'm telling <sighs> you that much. So yeah, he wants to. He's like, well, wait, I got to, you know, yeah, at least like, check out this mirror least, ceiling. Yeah, I got to uh, one more night. So Mike storms off to find the other boys. Right. And Denise is alone on this couch. She's not a part of this party. And then like that weird gal sits next to her. Who also looks like she's going to be like a wallflower, but she's also kind of a bully. Right. She was like, weren't you in my whatever class? And she was like, yeah, I told you guys she went to school with I us. I think she won a bet. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Like, she looks like she's weird, too. Mm-hmm. In her fucking pinafore. Wearing some old lady dress. Right? She looks like, what, she, is she a sub? <laughs> Who showed up at this party? Sub? And then Love Burger is about to play, but they start arguing about. Oh, right. Can't wear their own band shirts. shirts and They're for the fans, not the band. And then one of them drops a cigarette by the curtains. Right. And starts a fire. But she, the girl who whose house it is, quickly puts it out with a little throw pillow. Right. But someone has poop on their shoe. And like, so what's the resolution of that ever? Is that what she finds in the fridge? Because I thought that was going to go somewhere. Like there was going to be a poop thing. And there I never was. Just, well, she puts her nose in. Oh, right on like, people's. Right shoes come on ma'am you would have smelt it if he had dealt it (laughs) (laughs) and so yeah um and then kenny is over here sitting by these girls who one's all broken up over her boyfriend cheating on her and she's like i'm gonna hook up with the next guy who talks to me right and he's like oh bet he falls over in his chair in her lap practically he was like oh are you crying oh baby no you are far too too fine fine to to look look so sad sad. you tell special k what he could do to make (laughs) you feel better and she's She's like like, will you come to the pool house with me of course i will anything for you baby and then wait wait boy 
you better, you better go. Because as soon as you left. This is a momentary lapse in judgment on her part. Right. Momentary. Very momentary. Not as spend soon as 15 you left minutes the practicing room? the Kama Sutra and taking breath mints and cleaning your Kenny, armpits. Kenny. 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 You want to get laid or not. Get right? to the fucking pool house. You pronto. Pr- Pronto, Kenny. But no, he goes, he no. finds the girl and he gets, he narks on some other guy saying it was him with the. Oh, yeah, that portrait with the flappy titties. Yes, because they draw on her family oh portrait. God. That's terrible. That is. But you he know, sends whatever. her after the foreign exchange student. He had a marker. And so she's like, okay, you can use the upstairs bathroom, but, but don't it. close the door. It's wonky. It, it'll lock you in. Right. So he doesn't. He goes in. He hears her. Uh huh. And he's in there. It's tricky to rock around. To rock around. It's right on time. It's tricky. tricky. Doing, reading his Kama Sutra right? and practicing the moves he's of like his slippery ass fucking, fucking Come on, with his little legs and them jinkos. He, he almost even breaks smaller. his ass. Yes. With those pants and those shoes, those moon boots. And he the gets goggles. his pants all wet. He's trying to dry them with the hair dryer. He. This. He's never going to get laid this way. No, he's not going to get laid. And before we find out that he doesn't get laid, no, or does he? Does he? I, might. He might. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We should. We'll be right back. Uh, Nicole. Tessa. Guess what? What? The anchor ad is gone. I forgot to tell you something. Well, you're always forgetting stuff. Anchor turned into Spotify for podcasters. Oh, what? Yeah. So they changed it. Yeah, but all they changed was the name. Oh, thank goodness. You can still create, edit, and distribute your podcast from the phone or the computer. Wait a minute, though. Is this still free? It is still free. Uh, Yes. You can make money on Spotify for podcasters. No way. They're actually going to pay for this. They'll give you an ad. You can get subscriptions to your podcast. Other people will pay you, too. Can you believe that we get paid to do this? (laughs) That's... Silly. And if you want to see how easy it is and make some money on the side, go to Spotify.com forward slash podcasters. You should do it. We're doing it. You do it. Everyone should do it. Tell them Doom Generation sent you. Yes. And we're back. We are back. And poor Denise. She is headed up to or she's just like headed towards the stairs. She's just wandering throughout this party that she doesn't really yeah, she's be at. realized she doesn't know anyone who's going to give her a ride home. Right. And this hippie couple is on the stairs arguing <laughs> about this pot brownie, Ugh. which I guess is not tasty. So she just she doesn't it. even like she barely even puts it in her mouth. And then she doesn't offer it to him. She just throws no, it. She throws it like poop. Like she's a chicken. <laughs> like a handful of with shit. Poop. She just wings it through wherever. And, and there's no smack- apology. She just nope. smacks Denise right in the face with it and yep. walks off. And then he walks up and licks the fucking yeah, frosting Yeah, he doesn't want to waste face. it. I mean, the frosting do look good. So that is her boyfriend in Six Feet Under. That's right. Lauren Ambrose and Eric Balfour uh-huh. date in Six Feet Under. And then also uh, one of the jocks... Is in also six in feet six under, under. Yep. Fred, Freddie Rodriguez, I yeah. think, right? Oh, I love that show. It was so good. So let's take a moment and talk about weed brownies. Weed brownies will get me sick every time. And it's only been two times, and I won't do it anymore because both times I thought the first time was a fluke. <laughs> and just it was Well, just... because I was foolish. I was very you foolish. You ate a lot of it. I ate a lot of it because I was already really high. Ah. And I was happen? hungry. So by the time the brownies were done, I ate like, You're like mm, a wedge brownies. the size of my fucking palm and proceeded to get very, very sick. So the second time I was like, well, maybe I'll try it again. Because the first time, like I could see why I got sick because I ate way too much. I was already high. It was like entirely too much. Nope. Got sick with that again. So I will never eat another weed brownie. Other things, fine. Weed brownies, no. And I, I don't have like, I don't get sick off of edibles or weed brownies or whatever. Like, I feel like they don't even affect me, but I do have a funny story about the very first time anybody ever gave me a weed brownie. So I was in our local downtown at a local coffee shop, standing outside, smoking a cigarette. I was probably like 18, 19. And this guy comes up with a dog on a leash with a dog. dog? And he's like, wants to go in and get coffee, but he has this big dog. And he goes, Hey, can you watch my dog? I'll give you a pop brownie if you just watch my dog while I go in and get a coffee. So he does. He goes in. I watch the dog's nice, whatever. I pet the dog. I'm hanging out. He comes out. He hands me a pop brownie all wrapped in foil. And I'm like, thanks. Cool. Whatever. And he's like, 
try it. Like right like, there, right, like right here, there right on now. the sidewalk in the daytime in the 90s in front of this coffee shop. And yeah. I unwrapped this brownie and girl, you could see the branches. Oh, no. He had like. Oh, no. He had baked weed <laughs> straight up flour and branches mm. straight up in the brownie mix. Like mm. no just straightening it, it out. In, like, didn't put it in the butter. Like just dumped weed. And then he wanted me to taste it in front of him. Oh, so you could make that face like. Mm. And it was the driest. It was I just bet. weed. It just was yeah, like yeah. eating a hard brick of weed. <laughs> brick of weed. <laughs> it was not good. And so I didn't feel the need to try another weed brownie right. for many, many years because that's in you, my mind, that's what you were going to get. There's just like chunks of <laughs> marijuana hanging out the, the side of the brownie. Empty the bag into mm-hmm. your Duncan Hines yeah. brownie mix. That's what this man did. Mm. So, yeah, you guys, lesson, mm. you, you, you make that you fucking weed to, like, butter. You have to do a thing. And you got to okay. strain the leaves and the sticks and shit out before you and put it in the And please don't offer mix. me a brownie because I will not Tessa eat it. Will It'll get make sick. me don't sick. But if there's something else, if you got a cookie or something. Else, Anything I'll but a brownie, apparently, will do. A little bit of cake or whatever. Yeah, like that's fine. A little gummy. I'll do it. I'll do anything. I'm drop dead for now. <laughs> so now, Denise all covered in pot brownie Ryan, frosting. She looks like she's got a who threw these poops at me. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> who threw these poops at me? So she heads upstairs to the bathroom to right. clean off and Because no one's looking at her. She could go up. No, place. yeah. She could she's move invisible. wherever she wants. So she finds Special K being extra special. Right. He's got his <laughs> pants, his jinkos around his knees. It looks like he's, he's like, humping the hairdryer. Right. She's like, oh, my God, what are you doing? He's like, oh, close the door, but not like that. She slams it now. They're stuck inside. They are trapped. He breaks the handle off trying to get out. They oh, both start no. screaming. But and no one can, can hear. Because nope. no one's allowed upstairs. Nope. I'm surprised there wasn't people upstairs any goddamn way. Because right? Fucking in her parents' there bedroom. There was like... Th- they were painting on the portraits. Right. Why were they, they were writing on the portraits. Someone has poops on their shoes. They're lighting curtains on fire. Right. Like there's a fire. People are smoking in there. It was like, a velvet rope, Tessa. You can't cross <gasps> a velvet rope. Oh, but it was yellow. It wasn't red. Oh, was it? I don't know. I did not even clock I don't that. think it was red. It's not. It was like m- middle important. Mids. Mid. That's one of those things my brain just went. I don't. I don't did not retain that. I knowledge. cannot go in there because of the velvet rope. I cannot. I'm physically unable. And meanwhile, William's geek buddies are outside in their X Files shirts, looking at the stars, oh, talking William about UFOs. Okay. Yeah, worrying about him blending in. And oh, he's blending in. He's fine. He's doing body shots. He's oh, like the party king. He sure is. He can't feel his legs. I can't I feel, feel my legs. legs. Woo! He's like, there was something I had to do tonight. Yeah, he's totally forgotten about taking yep. revenge. He's he's living his life. He's having it. And Mike finally finds his bros and they're freaking with their girl. I wrote that same thing. They're in there grinding and freaking on their girlfriends. And like, wow, Mike is thing. like, oh, come on. Uh-huh. Wow, thing. And he takes them aside like, did you guys do it? What do you think, Mike? No. Does it look like they've done it? They're grinding on their asses. Do you think they did it? To wild thing? Do you no. think they're broken up? No, her dad got us really good seats to Pearl Jam. In like the concert in, in August. August. Oh. You guys suck. Oop. So now Cousin Ron's in there <sighs> tickling the ivories and he's being sleazy. Her. And like Amanda is. And this is the first time you even really hear her speak, right? I know. She's like talking about, I know why I started dating him. I just don't know why I stayed with him for so long. And I'm just. Which like I get the. And I kind of get it. Like if you were a nerd or whatever, right. you were Fine. nobody and you got to this high school as a freshman and the hottest guy her. in school chooses you. For a minute, you're like. All right, but yeah, I don't know why she stayed with him either. I don't know, but like she's changed and he's still the same guy yeah. that he ever was. And like And who is she if not Mike's girlfriend? I know that's she all, doesn't all she's even been. Know. That's all she's ever was in high school. And out there by the pool, Preston's being a total goon <sighs> about this letter. And like I was all, is he talking to us? Because like at first I was I like, who is he? Is he talking, talking to the to audience? Us? Like, what is this? Is this a fourth wall break? What's happening? Oh my no. God. Like, He's talking he to the foreign exchange student. He doesn't even know her. He doesn't even know her. He has come nope. up 
with the fantasy about who she even is. Like yep. he has no fucking clue. He doesn't clue. know what kind of music she likes. Nope. He doesn't know what kind of movie she watches. Nope. All he knows is what she looks like. Right. Well, he knows that she likes pop tarts. And it. she likes like that, at least that kind of food she likes. Yes. That one time. Who knows? Maybe she doesn't even fucking she was like, ew. She's like, ew, my mom gave me these fucking Pop-Tarts. I don't eat Pop-Tarts. I know. That would have been a red flag. Like, what are you fucking talking about? A strawberry Pop-Tart? Strawberry? <laughs> strawberries <laughs> taste like strawberries. Hands up. This is a strawberry. And, um, of course, it finishes with he, the foreign exchange student. Right. Would you, Would you like, like to, to touch, touch my, my penis? penis? Which is what they were teaching uh-huh. him. I am a sex machine. And so Preston runs off. Right, of course. And like Kenny and Denise are still stuck. He tries ramming the door, which opens in. So that's yeah, not going to work. I don't think that's going to work, bro. And she starts teasing him about his little pleasure pack. Oh, yeah. And he's talking about there's a super mad honey just dying to have sex, sex with, with me. me. And she's like, Come she's, on, already she's already hooked back, back up boyfriend. with her boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, it's over, dude. It was over the minute you left the room. Yes. It you was had that one it, fucking nanosecond. That was it. That you had gotten it. up right then. Maybe if she hadn't changed her mind on the way to the pool house, you well, would have gotten something. And then, well, for two seconds, because that's what would have happened. That's then gonna too. T- yeah, that's what's going to take. It wouldn't have been banging with anybody else, Kenny. And then Preston goes back in looking for Amanda and finds her cousin, her second cousin, molesting oh her God, on the fucking couch. Like aggressive. And she pushes him off. Of course, now Preston's already walked away. Doesn't see her push right, him he off. Doesn't see that. But, but like, like the body language, her I hand know. was like back behind her, like not invested in this. Like get the fuck well, off. This me. is all. He's not in reality. True. He is living a fantasy throughout this whole thing, and now this is like a crushing defeat. Yes. In his bullshit He throws his story. letter to Amanda away. <sighs> and the second cousin's like, don't tell my parents. Oh, my God. And then, you know what? I feel like I had a shirt like his. But, I mean, like, for mine, it, for me, oh, it was different. Okay. It I was had, a different look. I, was I certainly... had a shirt like Denise has in the very last, the green button-down short sleeve that yeah. she wears over the tank top. I Something feel like, like I that. had that exact shirt with, like, the white stitching. So, William. A lot of this, except for the goggles and the jinkos. Yes. William's making friends with some stoners. He's tripping right. them out with his theories. Yes. And Mike goes and plans himself between Selma Blair and some other girl. Yes. That's like, right. oh, I'm single now. Oh, I don't know if you heard, but I'm single. And they're like, oh, really? We heard. I heard you thought I was hot. I heard you thought we were skanks. Oh, someone told you that? Yeah. And so he gets left. And the geeks are back on the roof. Or not back. Still on they're the roof. Talking about... There. The one gonna, is going to meet his internet girlfriend. girlfriend. He's like, no, but she's got a photo shoot in Fiji. It's just the price you pay for dating Chrissy Turlington. Please. Please. And Preston's now, he's driven off. Oh, he's yeah, just he's left, left Denise left behind. Denise. He's like, even if your shit, your shit didn't work out, go find Denise and commiserate. I guess because she said she was going to get a ride home, he thought she already left because he didn't see her, but I don't think he even looked. I don't think he even no. looked. I wouldn't think that he looked, but he's jamming out to some Nazareth right now. Love hurts. Bum, 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 bum. Love scars. Yeah. And then back at the party, Melissa Joan Hart is digging through the trash for her yearbook someone uh, threw away. I can't believe you would throw it away. And like the letter falls out and gets stuck to those. What were those? Were those candies or Steve oh, Madden? Oh, those big old chunky uh-huh. fucking platforms. I want some. Yeah. Gets stuck on some gum, stuck to her shoe, drug into the house, stuck to a this keg. this not like the second fucking Smash Mouth song? Oh, I didn't even notice it was a Smash Mouth It's song. like obligatory Smash Mouth throughout this whole fucking it's, movie. It's the late 90s. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was <laughs> obligatory. You had to have at least one Smash Mouth song. I feel like they squeezed in at least two. And so somehow this letter finds its way into the snack mix right in front All of Amanda. All the way to Amanda, but she hasn't seen it. Nope, not yet. Do not see me. Because first we got to go check back in with Denise and Kenny in the bathroom. They're breaking it down in there. They've known each other since they were in elementary school. And she's like, look in the mirror. You're white. <laughs> I know. What's that supposed to mean? I don't always talk like that. Yeah, like I don't always talk like that. What about you, Miss Antisocial? Think I'm so much better than everyone else. And she's like, look, why do you care? You haven't yeah. talked to me since the sixth grade. Yeah, well, you told everybody I was a tampon. Yeah, you wrote it on my locker. <laughs> we used to play Miami Vice in my basement. Right? 
And so, yeah, so they're arguing back and forth about who stopped talking to who right, and like, who had to be cool, whatever. Right, because they're tra- like, what else are they going to do in this fucking bathroom? And Preston's out taking a sad sightseeing tour of the city. He it's stopped at the football to be field me. thinking about all the signs. And when he hears that Mandy is going to be on the radio every, every hour, hour on the air be- hour cause because it's Barry Manilow's birthday. birthday. Oh, it was supposed to be a sign, but it's not because your shit is bullshit. Your but, shit is bullshit. But no, he's got to rush to a payphone to ask Barry Manilow oh, yeah, about me. Call in because mm-hmm. he's calling from like Tokyo or something, and he's like, he's tuning in from Tokyo. <laughs> tune in Tokyo, tune in Tokyo. It's me, Barry Manilow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Someone raided my wardrobe <laughs> nightly. <laughs> So Amanda is at the party looking bored when she finally notices this letter with her name on it in the snack bowl in front of her. Right. She reads it and gets up to go look for Preston. She's going to find out who this is because she doesn't fucking know. And I want to know what did this letter say that she even gave a fuck. Right. It's from a stranger. What does it say that has touched your heart? Just yeah, that's it. Somebody wants me. But like. Lots Could of people imagine, want her. Like, Every dude in this you're party gonna go find is after who you. This is and what if you find him and it's some fucking yeah? You don't know. What if you're just like not attracted to him at all? What if it's Kenny Fisher? And you're like, or like one of his friends. You just turn around like, you're like, Ooh, never mind. So, um, but he's now at the drive-in trying to. He's use at the Johnny's payphone? Broiler, that Johnny's Broiler place or whatever. Where that I thought um, it also. Oh, because it was the drive-in restaurant or maybe whatever. I don't know. Okay. But he's in the payphone, the only working payphone in, like, America. Apparently, because Jenna Elfman approaches dressed like an angel and very rudely. I know. He's, like, trying to call and not getting through. And you never saw her try those other phones. She walked directly to the phone in the middle. the lights weren't on in them. They looked like they were broken, maybe. But she just straight, he gets through and she hangs up his call. All she's doing is calling a fucking cab. You can call a cab in two minutes after he asks, is Mandy about your dog? That's all he needs to know. He should have closed the fucking door right in her face. I, I would have blocked the door with my body. I would not have fucking let her open that shit. No, I would have pushed all my off. body weight against that thing. Get entirely fucked. Yeah, I'm that sorry. was so rude. It was very rude. I, like, mean, I like, get you it. Get you're to, an adult and he's he a teenager, like, but right, like, but fuck you. You don't know what he's doing cab. right now. It's just not because an emergency. He's... So what? Yeah. And so he's of course like, what the fuck? And she's like, hey, my emergency's bigger than yours, Junior. Ru- Bitch, Ugh. I'll strangle she's you what, before 22? the fucking. She's what twenty two, okay, but she's probably supposed to be well, like probably twenty one, twenty. I don't know five she's at a, the most. A stripper, an angel stripper. Well, she was driving with those wings, right? She was fully with the everything on driving with the robe cocked, and you open. don't put your fucking clothes back on when you leave the strip club. You just go in your bikini well, no, and robe. She was doing, I feel like she was. Or she was doing at a, a party, party, but like you didn't bring jeans to throw on or nothing. Right, like afterwards, throw some sweatpants on. Okay. In your unreliable vehicle, like, aren't you making like some decent stripper money? Yeah. You have a costume, I would assume. So she tells him about her terrible night when he says he had the worst night of his life. Which, right. Okay. Yeah. You had a I terrible mean, night. He's like, You're a stripper? An angel stripper. And then he realizes, wow, he really is a loser and starts yeah. to walk off, but she feels bad. Oh, I feel so bad. So let me tell you my story about Scott Bayo. Well, she doesn't tell him yet, because first we go back to the girl at the party mm. who finds some mystery, disgusting thing in the fridge, which is why I was like, right. is that where the shit is? They killed her dog and put it oh, in the fucking God. fridge. And Amanda's still looking for Preston. Like, she literally does not even know what he looks like. No. They're like, he sat, that one girl, he sat right next to you in freshman yeah, English. Yeah, but you wouldn't notice. Why would you pay attention to a unique spirit like Preston? Because you're all sheep. Sheep! And like, why is she not best friends with Denise? Right? Are they not like? Do they, they not totally be other? friends? Right? Isn't she somebody that girl? Yes, I feel like she's from other stuff too, and I can't think of what. Uh, no research assistant tonight. Nope. So we're never gonna know. And then the geeks are still up doing the lightsaber fight with their flashlights. They, they lose their lights. Them, yep. And now the angel tells Preston about. It's just like me and Scott Bio. And she met him after his first season of Charles in Charge at a mall tour. But she was in love with him way before that, like way back in the happy days and like Joni Joni and Chachi. Chachi. Yep. And so she waited for him in her red bandana. She was the first person in line. Wore that red bandana. And she froze when she saw him. Yep. She never never said anything. Yep. 
So she encourages him to get back on that phone and call Barry Manilow and tell him how you feel. Right. And if you want to be with him, then you should tell him right now. And he's like, whoa, wait, wait, no. no, no, no. no. That's... She's like, no, I don't think it's weird. I mean, it's okay. come on, Scott Bale. Like that cab got there quick. It did. That was a quick cab. So Preston heads back to the party. Right. The band is still fighting. They've played zero music. Nope. Brecken quits. Love Burger is no more. The guy jumps on there. Talk about he's 35, wants to play Paradise City. <laughs> and then William's like, I know this song. A kid I tutored used to play this song. And he gets up on the stage. It's hype. Ooh, and he just r- fucking gets his life to right? some Paradise City. The power of titties knocks him over, but he pops up. Woo! Catches the mic and serves. He stage dives. He is beloved tonight. He, he sure is. And uh, the geeks are still waiting on the roof. I know. Like, poor kids. I they could have been having this party too. They didn't even go in. Well, they needed to be. They were there for their good Judy. Yep. He's getting friends. smooches inside uh-huh. and they're out on the cold roof. I know. He's getting like hickeys. Mm hmm. He gets taken to the basement by two chicks. Could have been three. Which I don't know how he got out of the basement. I feel I, like he would have still been in the basement. Well, he was through. <laughs> right? With whatever it is, getting that massive fucking And hickey. like not just the, the one girl intercepts. Like another girl comes and intercepts I that know, girl. Well, that's what I'm saying. Could And been then three. the other girls outside are like, oh, Crying. lucky. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. All right. And so. In one night, he's managed to turn it all around because he got drunk. That's what yep. you got to do, kids. You got to drink to be cool. You got to drink to be cool. You got to drink to have fun. These are the rules. Just kidding. No, that's not true. So Mike's outside alone and sad when Jerry O'Connell appears. Trip McNeely. Right? Trip McNeely with his uh, Delta Iota yes. Kappa, his dick shirt on. He was last year's most popular senior. Yep. A sexual icon. Oh, but now... He must be racking it up in college. Nope. Can't even get digits as a freshman. Nope. They all want to date older guys. They're all serious and shit. They would talk about world issues and crap. Economicals. <laughs> Economicals. Guys like us are a dime a dozen. Right? The worst thing I did was break up with my girlfriend before high school. Hey. You still with Amanda? That hot little number. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Me and Amanda. Sure, sure, sure. He's like, oh... Best advice I can give you to, is to stay with her and wear some flip flops in the shower. I got warts all over my oh. feet. And so Mike panics and goes to look for Amanda. She's still looking for Preston with no luck because she and, doesn't know what the fuck he looks like. She doesn't know who he is. And one of these stoners is Jason Siegel that she's right, asking. His first appearance. And she, so Mike finds Amanda and tries to kiss her and pretend like they are like they never broke up. Right, and she's like, like she's no, like, uh, no, I'm not. You're being real drunk and annoying right now. And he's like, I want to talk about us. And she's like, no, there's uh, no us. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Like she disses him publicly. Everyone so. in the party leans in. Ooh, so he shows his entire ass. Mm-hmm. Amanda. I know. She's Come like. On. <laughs> No, nice screw that. Back. The answer is no. You're a childish, self-centered asshole. Take me back, please. And he's like, Amanda. Yeah, like, oh, come great on. comeback. Yeah, that's real good. You have fun. And so he, she's like, why don't you walk away and save yourself the embarrassment? Ooh. He's like, no one's going to want you now. And she's <laughs> like, somebody does, somebody clutching does. this letter. Girl. Pathetic. So many dudes are staring at you at this party. Come on now. Pathetic. So she walks off and someone calls him the F slur and everybody right? laughs. And then William it's suddenly so remembers it's his so plan. Cringe. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's, oh, that's what Mike is like. Oh, kick everyone's ass in his room. And then Preston comes back. Mm-hmm. Amanda's walking around and all these dudes are saying disgusting stuff to her. She's, she's running like, the dude gauntlet. And then Preston runs out and shouts, I love you. <laughs> and okay, wants, Wyatt wants to go someplace with her. And she's like, what? You know what? You think I'm going to strip off my clothes and do you? Because some imagined moment that you thought we shared, like you've probably been drooling over for the last four years. And yeah, how sick and deluded are you? Why don't you go off and get yourself a goddamn life, asshole? And everyone cheers. And you know what? Stick to that. Yeah. Because all of that was 110% go facts, B. Facts. Put Beatrice. your Timberlands on because them that was is facts. factual, Beatrice. And so I don't know what about him. I, th- I got to see this letter. I, because what about this letter supersedes all of those facts? Because she doesn't even know who the fuck he is. And what no. she realized. This is fucking 
foolishness. You know what? Now I'm mad. I'm, <laughs> you know what? This was terrible. And so now um, William's like consoling Mike. Right. He's like, who's all sad now. He's hugging William and crying. Right. He's like, come with me. These girls want to have you watch them. Like, come on. And he's all sad. Like, Mike breaks down. Like, I'm a loser. And he hugs William. And, like, it's this whole thing. So Kenny and Denise are still in the bathroom. They're now singing, singing you got the right stuff, stuff baby. baby. Some new kids. Yep. They're, like, bagging on each other. Out, bagging on each other's Bagging. Outfits, bagging. And, like, Kenny goes in for the smooch. And she kisses him back. Oh, she reciprocates. And then we have that super sexy 311 track. Because that's what I want to fuck to. You did in 1998, apparently. Somebody did. did. Like somebody did, I'm sure. So Amanda's going to leave, and Melissa stops her to sign her yearbook. And she finally finds Preston's picture and is like, She looks him up like, Oh, "Oh, shit. Because again, she doesn't know who the fuck. This is sad on two counts. Mm hmm. Two counts of sadness. She and he are both sad. Both of them. They deserve each other. You know what? Great. Right? You guys are both sad Great. sacks. Sure. You both make me fucking sad. <laughs> and so Preston's already left the party. He's driving home sad. Kenny right. and Denise are going to get some use from this pleasure pack. Not really. They didn't use anything I, in there I, well, except for like maybe the condoms. Open. Yeah. They lit the candle. William and Mike are hanging out together. Right, they bond. Mike apologizes for being a dick. He's like, when was that? Like, oh, that this was morning. this morning at graduation. Um, Love Burger's packing it up when Brecken comes back for a oh, shirt. Oh, they decide to get back together. To reunion. Yep. And then the um, <laughs> Special K's homeboys are right, trying to what up my N word to this word, fucking like group of kids. And they're like, like uh-uh. chased out of the party. Uh, turns out Denise is not a virgin. She's, She's done it that one time. time. So Kenny is like for the next few moments. And so, yes, Kenny loses his virginity to Denise. Right. The cops finally show up. What time is it? It is now after 2 a.m. Yeah. Because when he made that call at the payphone, it was something about That's it being 2 a.m. 2 a.m. So like this is what? Three, four. In the yeah. Morning? The cops finally arrive. Everyone um, scatters. Yep. William throws running. Melissa's yearbook into the pool when she tries to get his signature. William tries to save Mike from the trap. But the geeks have just woken up right. and jump them, they chloroform them. They fulfill the plan, and it turns out it's Mike and William. They don't notice. Right, because they don't have their flashlights. Right, so. they find it, and they're like, oh, no. And that redhead kid steals that cop car? Yes. Like, just straight up. Yes. And the cops find William and Mike in that position. Of course. And they're like, oh, uh oh. And like, Kenny totally blew it. Yeah, they're post coitus in the bathroom floor with it's awkward faces. Awkward, like, right. And like, she's like, it gets better. You can go for longer. Like, for longer. He's like, oh, what? Since you did it one time, you just know, like, you're he gets like all an street. expert. Yeah. And she's like, you're an asshole. He's like, look, baby, I ain't going to fault you with your lack of flavor. <laughs> <laughs> And then the girl whose house it is finally opens the door and oh, finds she's them. Like, what the fuck? Freaking the fuck out. Get, get out, get out, out, get out. Kenny chases Denise and they make up and make out. And then William wakes up in jail. His parents are there to bail him out. Right. He's like, did you see my dad? Does he have like a weapon? Is he <laughs> like, am I in trouble? And he's like, well. Well, no, because Mike beat you up and forced you to drink and took all your clothes off and put you in that position. And right. he's like, what? What? He was like, well, that's what Mike said. So we think Mike's going to get a redemption arc here. But no. no, no, not really. And Amanda's at home throwing all her Mike pictures away. She's taking down the Mike years. And then neither Mike or her can sleep that night. Or no, not or Mike. Preston. Uh, Preston is, yeah. yeah, he's all packed, but he's not sleeping. Uh, he heads out for brekkie with Denise. And they're still apparently up from the party having I guess. breakfast. Well, you could do that. Yeah. You could do that. She's ended up. They with don't have Kenny. cell phones. She was. That's true. She's there with Kenny. He's having a whipped cream. Hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. All up on his nose. Yeah. Waving. He's like, wow. Preston's like, can I come to your wedding? Right. She's like, shut oh up. Oh, my God. So he's like, she's like, did you finally tell Amanda? And he nods. And she's like, and? And he just shakes his head like, mm. nope, my fantasy did not work out. We're not meant to be. I guess so. They say goodbye. She says, I believe in fate. It just works out in fucked up ways sometimes. Like, yeah, especially in your case. 
So Melissa and the excited memory guy are right. at breakfast together. They Mike is with bond. his boys at this place. Right. William goes in to thank him, but... But no, Mike's still a fucking well, asshole. He's not going to upset the order of things. He calls him. They all call him Urkel. Yeah, Urkel. And so the, here's where we get everybody's little wrap-up right. story on screen. So William, William went to Harvard. He formed a software company valued at forty million, and now he's dating a Super Bowl. He was the most popular guy at Harvard. Mike drank too much, lost yep. his football scholarship, is overweight, and has been fired from his car wash job once those Polaroids surfaced. Ouch. Uh, Denise broke up with Kenny five minutes later. Ten minutes later, they found a bathroom and got back together. <laughs> the redhead kid steals a gumball machine from behind them. Right. Uh, Preston arrives at the train station where I guess now his car just stays forever. I, yeah, he drove that's himself. almost like he drove himself to the train station. Like this whole thing, it doesn't work out. Like someone went to pick it up later. I had that same question. Yeah. And then Amanda arrives. Oh, she has shit. his letter. She's like, oh, so you're leaving now? Right. <laughs> Oh, yes. bad timing. I have a workshop with Kurt Vonnegut. He's like my hero. And then we have Yaz, only you. She's like, well, you should go. Right. Oh, that's really great. You should go. Come. Maybe it's better this way that I be single for yeah, a while. Yeah, probably. So they shake hands. Bye. They do the whole looking back. Oh, they oh, missed each they other. Oh, but they don't see like Looking whatever. back, miss each other. And then he runs and jumps over the thing and goes in take for the a later kiss. train. Uh, and seven hours later, he finally got on the train to Boston. And she wrote him a letter every day. And they're still together. The end. And the but geeks wait. are still walking home talking about jumping William. Right. Nothing exciting ever happens. And the spaceship comes and Which, beams them out up, of nowhere. Yes. Like that was out of nowhere. Well, they were stoked about it. So great. That's they what were. happens to them. So... I what did we think of Can't Hardly Wait after 25 years, Tessa? Uh, so, yeah. I could um, wait. I could wait. I could have waited. I could have waited. I could have waited the rest of my life to ever watch I this movie again. I could have waited. I mean. I, I texted Tessa after I watched this and said, I remember this movie being funny. Yeah. I went to see it in theaters like it was a I thing. I remember liking it. I yeah, I don't remember loving it or being no, like obsessed with like, it, but I remember enjoying it, watching it more than once. Yeah, and I watched it within the last couple of years, and I was like, oh yeah, I love this movie. But yeah, now you look at this dynamic, and you're like, what does either one of you want with the other one? You have no knowledge of one another. No, because that's the thing. That's what that's what you wanted to happen. You wanted to have a dramatic fucking train station and if she moment, went, and like yeah. And if she went from being nothing but Mike's girlfriend straight into a relationship with him and then married him, then she's nothing right? but his wife now. Like, I know she just what absorbed she his do? personality. Probably she well, likes probably. all the music he likes of and course. all the movies he likes. Of course, because he's so he's such a unique spirit. <sighs> she's sheep. She is. So we have one yearbook signing. Speaking of yearbook signings, oh yeah, sign Melissa my Joan Hart. We got everybody's signature. And we got another one from Spade. Listening to you guys is like sitting in the lunchroom in school, and you can overhear the conversation at the next table about a cool movie they both watched. And hearing them talk about it is really engaging, and makes you want to talk about it too, or go watch the movie and show and or show. Thank you, Spade. Thanks, Spade. Um. Wow. So. Between this week and next week, you guys, it is our two-year anniversary. Yeah. Two years. So if you want to leave us a message at 702-720-DOOM, I know we just did this for 100 episodes, but if you didn't get a chance to leave us a message for 100... You can always do it for two years. You can years. leave us a two-year anniversary message. Um, it's a birthday. Yeah. You have any other comments or whatever? No, no? I don't. All right. On that note, we'll talk at you next time. Later, Doomers. Later, doomers.